Keep it stable, stable, centered, and... What's up guys, we have a super fun video for you today where Landon and I are going head to head against each other in our very first video of our brand new series, Pro vs. Pro. My name's Nate Taylor and I was hired onto the full-time filmmaker team about six months ago. Prior to me joining the team, I filmed weddings all over the world for the past five years. And here next to me, I have Landon by the way. He is a great cinematographer who has been all over the world filming for companies and creating content for FTF. Now most of you are familiar with our popular Beginner vs. Pro series where beginners with expensive equipment go head to head against seasoned professionals using entry level equipment. But we wanted to switch it up and see what we could learn from two professionals competing against each other. So we're both gonna be challenged with creating a short cinematic sequence and we'll have free range to set up our lighting, tell the story a certain way, whatever we want. But the surprise factor is that we have these three hats and in each hat they will contain either a subject, a camera, and a limitation. So this impairment could have an effect on our lighting, our storytelling, our camera movements, depending on what we draw. But we each only have an hour at whatever location is drawn and we'll have one day to edit together our sequence. Then we'll come back to the studio and see how they compare. So Landon, go ahead and draw out of this first hat, which is our location. Should I do the other one next? I'm not looking. And then this last one is our impairment. Okay, so we got fight scene. Ooh. I've never shot a fight scene. I've never shot a fight scene either. So this should well, be Well, this is gonna be real. <laughs> We're pros, but we've never shot a fight. Okay, well. That's... Jake shot a fight scene. Uh, maybe Jake should be doing this video. Yeah, maybe. Fight scene, and then camera of choice. Camera of choice. I like that, I, I can work with that. I can work with that too. Okay. R5 did. <laughs> okay. Fight scene, camera of choice, and then I, I get to go handheld, and you have to be on a gimbal. <laughs> oh. Literally, that's probably the worst combo, yeah, is a fight scene. Yeah, fight scene a... and gimbal All right, doesn't good luck. really... Yeah, I feel like I have pretty much every advantage. Yep, well, definitely. at least the main advantage on this one, so... Well, All right. let's see how it goes. Ready? Here we go. All right guys, we're here on set. We have with us Robert and his crew who are over there getting ready for the fight scene that we're gonna shoot in just a little bit. Now we're each gonna have an hour with the stunt crew and when one person is filming, the other person will be out of the room so we can't kind of cheat off of each other's ideas. So enough talking, let's get shooting. Three, two, one. All right guys, we're shooting and I quickly wanted to go over some camera settings and what kind of gear I'm using to get the shots that I am. I have the 24 millimeter set up on the EOS R5, shooting at 4K 24 frames per second with a one over 50th shutter speed. I also have my aperture varying between 1.4 and 2.8 to keep that shallow depth of field a little bit more than it would be at like a 1.2. I'm switching between a 24 and a 50 millimeter lens so I can have those tights and wides because on a gimbal, it's really nice to orbit my subjects as the fight is going on to a establish both location and the action that is happening. I have it set up on the DJI RS2. In regards to lighting, I'm shooting on the Aperture 300D Mark II with these Nanlite tube lights all set to daylight so to create a blue kind of feel during my fight scene to make it look cool and uninviting. I set my 300D outside for the opening of my sequence when I had my antagonist standing here at the garage to create this moonlight on my antagonist's face. I use the softbox for most of my protagonist shots and the hard light for my antagonist shots to make them look more evil but let's keep shooting.
All right, so I'm shooting on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K in 6K resolution, Blackmagic RAW. I actually just started using Blackmagic RAW a lot more because I am on DaVinci Resolve now, so I can actually do the full color grade and I can utilize all that RAW data. I'm also using the Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter lens. This is a Super 35 sensor, and this is an APS-C lens technically, but they actually work really well together. So that's kind of the combo I'm going with. And on top of that, I do have the Prism Lens Effect dream effects filter which is kind of like a mist diffusion um, but it just kind of softens those highlights and it makes them look really nice so on top of that we're also going to be using kind of some warmer lighting like 2700 kelvin so i kind of want to give this warehouse like an old-fashioned warehouse look with lots of tungsten lighting so it's kind of the basic setup i'm going to go for on this video <laughs> All right, we just finished filming our sequences. We're actually gonna split ways. We're gonna edit them all together, and then tomorrow we're gonna meet back up at the office. And there we're gonna watch the videos back together and let you as our YouTube audience decide which video you thought was better. Here we go. All right, guys, we're back here at the studio. Can we, hold on, can we actually, can we just watch? Yeah. Can we just watch the yeah. video? I feel like it would be better if we watched them and then we talked about them. Let's, can we do that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's That's watch. Better. You wanna go first? Uh, yeah, I'll go first, let's do it. Okay. Let's... I really wanna see this, so let's, uh, let's do yours first. All right. <laughs> you know, it's very much video game like, you know, you beat a villain and they're sitting there just in angst and groaning to themselves. No, I loved it. It was just kind of humorous at the end because <laughs> they were in so much pain. I'd be crying, so I'd, I I'd mean, better make that sound than whimper like I would. So that was dope, honestly. Thank you. That was sweet. And I'm impressed Appreciate I was on a gimbal too because I, I, we already said this. Clearly, I had the advantage handheld. Right, right. You know, me being handheld, you want to gimbal because a fight scene, naturally you have those those quick movements and you just kind of need to go handheld for stuff like that. But I saw you added a lot of like digital zooms and stuff. I did. That was a lot in the, you know, post-processing of the video. That mm -hmm. was uh, one of the biggest challenges is how do I make the viewer still feel like they're part of the fight scene? And so my idea was to add some keyframes to follow actions as they were happening. So did you end up using sport mode on the gimbal then? I actually didn't because the reason why I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could create a fight scene that was you know entertaining enough without making it look handheld on a gimbal okay that was also one of the really cool things about being on a gimbal too though is i was able to orbit around my whole subjects pretty easily i established the whole location as i was walking around my subjects biggest difficulty though with doing that is the light caught my shadow a lot of the times so. oh yeah because you're you're 360 yeah, yeah you're yeah, in the whole scene yeah. that makes so sense so that was a big yeah. challenge i had speaking of lighting what was the look you were going for biggest look i was going for is you know john wick-esque dramatic lighting sharp lighting john wick is easily as protagonist as he is an antagonist because most villains have you know the dramatic lighting split lighting on their sure. face what's the like what's the story behind this video too because we we had the same actors and actually the same choreography for yeah. the fight scene but we set up our stories so differently we so did. Like, what's the story here because he walks in he walks into the light you get that nice like john wick yeah. style yeah. lighting that's, that's and rude. then he looks at his dare i say analog watch <laughs> <laughs> and then he clicks it and there's like a digital beep yeah there is what's what's the story there so there is obviously that little bit of a disconnect <laughs> but it was the only watch that i had because we only had an hour to shoot <laughs> yeah. i didn't have a lot of time to get i'm just props. giving you a hard time <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so one of my favorite scenes is the scene from Equalizer. He times himself to see how fast he can beat the bad guys. Oh, and so like a personal record. Personal record. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes so, how many writing on his yeah, whiteboard? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so he, he actually gets. doesn't write it down. But oh, oh, okay. Yeah, but he just he has a digital watch that he times himself. He says before the fight, he'll, he'll time himself and be like. 12 seconds yeah. and then he'll go and beat them look at his watch realize if he's behind or faster than he thought i love it I love so it. that was my planting and payoff in this video is 
planted the idea that he's timing himself and then he clicks it at the end and walks away, you know? Okay. You know what? Let's see your video. Let's okay. break yours down. All right, let's watch it. This is really where I'm nervous. Oh, geez, just that opening frame is nuts. Trying to bring you down, but for real, you might as well give up now. Think you got a chance, but I don't see how. Got a real tight grip when I hold that crown. My life been good and bad and all around. The more things I lost, the more I found. One thing I taught myself to do, no matter the problem, refuse to lose. So, how you want it, man? You can choose. If you can't take the heat, don't light the fuse. See, I walk in slow and ignite the room. Like fire, everything I touch, I consume. I came here ready to fight on this night. You better just run for your life. You know, right off the bat, that video, you could honestly feel like you were in the action. What were some of the biggest pros to shooting handheld? Because you obviously had the advantage. So what, what do you feel were the biggest pros while you shot this? I mean, you can't name one action scene that's shot fully on a gimbal. There's always, it might be partially on a gimbal, but there's always handheld stuff right. when it's the most intense stuff. Maybe they're on a rig, but it definitely has that handheld feel, you know? I do the same thing with fitness videos. You do handheld because you want to feel like you're in the action. You're Absolutely. working out with them. Same thing here. If he's creeping around the squat rack, over here in the back of the of the warehouse you want to feel like you're actually like huddled next to him and maybe you're hiding too right. you know it gives you that first person kind of view exactly yeah. so that, that was that was definitely the benefit of going handheld and I, I would have preferred and I did get that advantage going handheld so the only con that I had I guess with handheld is setting up the story that first shot when he's coming around the side of the building and then you run past the camera that kind of would have been nice on a gimbal because I, I wanted that to be smooth I didn't really want that to be shaky right I should it just a touch shaky i put a little bit of warp on it so it works out it wasn't a big deal you probably wouldn't think twice about it after seeing it but on set i would have loved to have a gimbal at least for that shot so absolutely you know in a real world situation you would have a gimbal in handheld like you mentioned oh yeah i would definitely i would switch off back and yeah, forth no absolutely doubt. after you shot all of the lights for my scene like everything was just dying all the lights were running out of battery so by the end like it was super moody and I wanted it to be moody, but not that moody Like because all my lights were dying. I couldn't light my scene quite as much as I wanted to. And because I was on the black magic that honestly isn't the best in low light, I couldn't bump up my ISO any higher or else there would have been even more noise. So I kind of just had to keep the whole video a bit darker than I would have hoped, but I guess I'll just bring an extension cord next time so that doesn't happen. The lighting I was going for was kind of like, if you imagine like Mission Impossible, I think it's Fallout. And a lot of, honestly, a lot of cinematic movies, mm -hmm. they don't light necessarily just from the front with a key light, giving you like some Rembrandt lighting. They do that right, a lot, right. but a lot of the time they're actually lighting you from the back. So they're kind of silhouetting you and then maybe giving you a little bit of fill light, you know? Right. And so that's just the general look I was going for, which actually made it a lot easier because I didn't have to worry about having a light perfectly on my subject at all times. Absolutely. I just had to make sure that they were being outlined from the background so you could kind of see them. Like this guy, when he's standing there, it's so dark. Like I'm not crushing my blacks or anything. They're sitting at a good level, but I'm not lighting him directly from the front. He's just being lit from the back. So you see the outline of his nose. You see a little bit of a catch light on his eye even, and it just looks so good. It's just very cinematic. When doing these tracking shots of your subject, did you find it like super hard being on handheld? Like, <laughs> did you do anything special to try to smooth that out a little bit or did you just let it be shaky as it would? While they were walking and stuff. Yeah. No, I, I honestly wanted it kind of shaky because it's like, if, you, if you're gonna go handheld, you right. just kind of need to accept that it's going to be a shaky cam. And so going into the video, I was like, okay, hey, it's just gonna be like, it's a natural, like we're walking with them. And that's gonna be the whole vibe of the video is that it is shaky. It is just kind of in the moment. So, so yeah, I don't know. I just kind of accepted the fact that it was gonna be shaky. And right, right. at times, you know, you might prefer it and at times you won't prefer it. But in this case, I actually really liked it. I wasn't in the room when Landon shot all this, but I do know that with handheld, it's pretty quick to switch 
switch in and out of lenses. You know, you go from a tight to a wide, it's just, you know, a really quick change. You can keep your actors in the moment when you change out lenses. Yeah. To go back to gimbal, that was a really hard thing. I had to switch out my lenses, and when I did that, I had to rebalance the whole rig. My actors would take a break, get out of character, and it was just really difficult. And so what I can see, you know, here is when you change those lenses, your actors were still in it. They were still in that emotion, and it just really sold there in the fight scene, and it was really cool. Speaking of the fight scene, how did you find the sound effects? Like, doing all the sound engineering, what was that like for you? Because that was hard. It was hard. That was it's, really difficult. It honestly took me probably, like, four hours in total just to find a good fight pack. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, we recorded audio on set, but it just wasn't the same. It didn't carry enough depth. Like, what we did was we had we had the boom mic, and then we had the stunt actors right. just, like, doing the, you know, and they hit themselves, right. and they, like, make the yeah. sound. And like, it's okay, but it's never enough, in my right. opinion. Like yep. you always have to enhance it with some more sound effects, so. A lot of sound effects that you see in like movie fight scenes, a lot of them have these risers and these hits and these big bass drops to, you know, emphasize a moment that's happened because what's happening visually and what you hear in your ears needs to have a correspondence between each other. And so when you have a, a big loud hit, you need to have something visually that actually shows that. And so you'll see some people delete frames in the editing room, which is mm -hmm. what I did sometimes to make, you know, the punches look like they hit a lot harder than they did. Yeah, but yeah sound effects was such a hard thing to find honestly like it took such a long time Probably had 16 layers of audio going really yeah between the you know, the ticking of his watch and the heartbeats and yeah. the hits and the grunts and the clothes rustling as they hit you never realize how many layers of audio you need for a video it's until you're true. actually like editing and putting it together so actually we're gonna do an editing breakdown inside the course for each of our videos so if you do want to take a closer look at the editing how we cut the clips together how we color graded it how we did the sound design you can check that out inside the full-time filmmaker course as well all right guys that's it for today's video if you haven't already leave us a comment down below and tell us what video you thought was better and why I hope you had as much fun watching this video as we did creating it if you're interested in learning more about how to shoot cinematic videos increase your skills or gain more experience in this field and make money as a filmmaker, we put together a free one hour training where we break down our top 10 secrets to getting cinematic shots like you saw in this video. These 10 secrets include things like frame rates, lens choices, camera angles, and how to get the most out of the gear you're using right now, even if that gear is a cell phone. We're gonna include a link in the description below, so make sure to check that out. Also let us know in the comments what you wanna see next and who you want to go head to head. Like we said, we want this to be a new series where we not only go against each other here on the FTF team, but collaborate with other YouTube creators on this platform for a little friendly competition. But that is it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out. And if you have any further questions, as always, please let us know.